Great Smoky Mountains is full of history. Entire towns once existed within the boundaries of what is now the National Park. The Elk Mountain area of the Smokies is one of those towns. Its history goes back to the region's logging heyday in the early 1900s. It's also one of the most well-preserved. Today the trail hunters explore the Elkmont area as well as hike the Jake's Creek Trail up to the mountain cabin once occupied by famous artist Mena Trainer Avent. Come on along! Hello! Wow, look at that. It's got wow. the... Oh, you can see man, yourself? It's got the wow. color screen and everything. Oh, sorry. We're just admiring our new GoPro. Yeah. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. We're, we're, this is a, a test run with this. Um, we are... Oh, yeah. We're in the uh, Smokies. Yeah, Smokies. By the way, we're and using one camera right now. Just, yes. for, just for... Yeah, we're, yeah. Tr we're trying... We still got our other cameras, but we had to replace the one. So... So, they replaced it with this. And it comes with a mic, so yeah. I have no idea why I'm yelling. Yeah, it has the external <laughs> mic and everything. This is kind of, it's like, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> so we're trying it out. Uh, uh, anyways, we're going to be hiking up Jake's Creek Trail, I think, dang it, I forgot. But right now, we're going to check out Elkmont. They've done a lot. Yeah, of work. it looks like they've pretty much finished the rest. Last time I was here, they were still working on several of the cabins, but it looks like they're done. Hopefully, the morons haven't carved or drawn. Yeah. Oops. So yeah, we're gonna check out Elkmont first before we get on the trail. We're heading up to the Advent cabin. That that poet that had her own cabin out here. She did a lot of her writing. Poet, she was a, know. yeah, she was a famous poet. And she had a cabin out here and it's up there. He's not been there. Been where? She got a cabin. Oh. And so that's where we're going. And that's today's adventure. Cause yeah. So let's check this out. Yeah. <laughs> Here's cabin number one. Number one. Number one. And that's number two. <laughs> and and you know, so forth. no pets inside the buildings. Funny how that used to say no pets allowed, period. And it's cold. Yeah, but why the heck is it cold? I didn't wear my jacket. I wear ah. my jacket because I'm smart. Man, look at this. Look at the fireplace. Look at, wow. Let's they renovate this so that people can actually rent these. That, that, would, be, that would be... Yeah. Actually sweet. So, wow, look at the window work up there. Huh. Yeah. There's a... Uh, clothes and stuff right there. Oh, well, that's just for the homeless people. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, uh, this may not be like... Hello? Yeah. The bathrooms are closed. What? Of course, we know why they have to close the bath or keep the bathroom sealed off. Can anyone guess why they have to do that? I think not they just, are. Even though yeah. they have wires back then. Yeah, they did have wires back then. Yeah. Elkmont used to be a higher class 
uh, uh, wasn't it like a resort community? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I didn't get the brochure. Back to the, the bathroom question. You know why they have to keep the bathrooms closed off? Because random people keep <laughs> in it. Pretty much. Because <laughs> people are stupid and they use them. <laughs> Dang. This is. I feel like there's any kind of insulation because it's cold as hell in here. <laughs> that was an oxymoron, right? Cold as hell? As hell's not, you know. You know. You guys know it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this is something. Huh. Double porch? Yeah. So, um, we didn't know at the time that the, the, this model of GoPro, with especially with the microphone thing on it, is much larger than the older GoPros, so it won't fit on our gimbals. <laughs> so this may, picture may be a little, not as stable as our typical videos. But if GoPro's watching, we'd love to have some products from you if you want to send us yeah, them. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a gimbal for this one yet. Not saying mm -hmm. we're sponsored or anything. No. Hey, GoPro, but, you know what? It. You know, we aren't oh, yeah. sponsored yet. But, we have crossed 500. 500. Thank you guys. Thank yeah, you guys we so get, can't express our thanks, you know, Deeply enough. So, <coughs> some things are coming. Oh, yeah. We're working on merch. Yeah, merch you guys can purchase. Yeah. And with your money that you can send to us and we'll take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it anymore, but you get cool stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have some stickers and some t-shirts and stuff coming. That's right. And why do they have plugs up there? Yeah. It's weird. They didn't have TVs. Do they have phones? That's a phone jack. Those are... What? Hmm. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's not a chick code. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to write through my... Stern letter. This floor doesn't seem natural. It's awful 70s. How long do people live in, in Elkmont? I'm gonna have to do some Jeez. research. They even have the old fuses. Yeah. With the, those little things to screw in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not enough because that's too many wires coming out. Don't get me. Oh. <laughs> I could write code all day right now. Mr. Uh, electrician over here. Hey, another fan. Whoa. Guess you don't have to worry about AC, huh? Hear the rush of the, the river back there? There must have been a lot of rain recently because all the rivers are up. And 441 was closed. We can't. You can't get to the higher elevation of the Smokies today, Park. Because it's still ice and snow. Yeah, so we couldn't... Did you hear door closed? Is I didn't bring my K2 meters. Dang it. Could be. That door opens. I'm so um, startled. Okay, so... Uh, Um, so there's nobody else in here. <laughs> Seems fine. I'll check this out. <laughs> Another fuse box. That would have been where the ice box goes. So, 
What what closed the door then? If I, don't know. I just thought somebody else was coming in. But there's nobody here. Oh, that's a good screen door. It's so screeny, you can't even see it through here. You can't put your hand through it. Wow. There's no screen. <laughs> okay, be back. Been broken. Of course. Look at how they did that. The, uh, what would you call that? Uh, <laughs> Design work. Stuff. We have <laughs> branches up on the banisters here. Cheek more. Creek. It's creepy. Oh, creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paid to read. Wow. I don't think we've ever been in this one. I don't know if we have, because it doesn't look familiar. You need to get a door. That's one. We can't get in there. History and exploration comes together here yeah, in the Elkmont region of the Smokies. There's just something about investigating abandoned structures and ruins as it helps get a little picture of what life must have been like when areas like this were thriving. The town of Elkmont was established in 1908 by the Little River Lumber Company. In 1910, the company began selling land to outdoor enthusiasts, and by 1912, the Wonderland Park Hotel Resort was constructed. Over the next two decades, the area evolved into an elite vacation area for East Tennessee's wealthy, so they could gather and socialize. Following the creation of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, residents were given lifetime leases. But gradually, residents left the region, and in 1984, when Lem Owensby, the last of the park's lifetime leasees, passed away. In 1994, many of the Elkmont structures were listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and in 2009, the Park Service began restoring 18 cottages and the Appalachian Clubhouse. Check out this one. Look, it even has this cobblestone walkway going up to it. It's my house. This is sharp, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, I guess this is what uh, it looked like before they started the restoration work. Vaulted ceilings. <laughs> oh, it's the porch. Imagine living amongst all that. And you can just see, I mean, the, that roar of the river, which we're going to see the river here in just a little bit. Oh, this, this is the this is empty. Yeah. See, the kitchen has its own door to the outside, so when uh, your wife or, like, people try to cook and it smells bad, you just open the door. Close this one, open that one, all the bad smoke go out there, and then you go out and get pizza. <laughs> you think Domino's was delivered out here back then? Maybe. <laughs> Did they have Domino's back then? I don't know. But man, just, just everywhere, at least today, because I know that the rivers are up right now, but that roar is just everywhere in this little town. Can you imagine? It must have been really easy to fall asleep out here with that white noise type sound. I'd say, you know, you open your windows and you go into bed at night, but <laughs> fresh air is for dead people, y'all. If you know, you know. Did I blow your mind on that one? I don't get it. Fresh airs for dead people. Because, you know, murderers, 
if you leave your window open, they climb in through your open window and kill you. And most people open their windows for fresh air at night when they go to bed. So that's when a serial killer climbs in and kills you. So fresh air is for dead people. Huh. I watch. I listen to way too much true crime podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Our house probably scares people though. There's the Appalachian Clubhouse. Oh, she walked in my mind this morning. So all the people that lived here and there Elkmont is far more than just these few houses right here. I mean there used to be houses going all the way down the road, which we're we're gonna I think we walked down part of that road. But the park service has pretty much knocked down all the houses that were out there. They only decided to save these few here on this main road. Anyways, the community would come together right here. <laughs> At the Appalachian Clubhouse, and I think you can still rent this for like events weddings or family reunions and stuff like that. Here we go, this is the Appalachian Club House is once the heart of a resort community that grew up here. So this is a resort community. <clears throat> See in 1910, 50 acres were deeded to a group of civic and business leaders who wanted to establish a sportsman's club. Over time the club became more social and members included many of Knoxville's commercial and civic elite. The Appalachian Clubhouse double as a hotel for members and their guests, serving as the social hub that tied Daisy Town, Millionaire's Road, and Society Hill all together. There's pictures of the people chilling out on that porch over there. Right so yeah. Like I said, you can book this place for any kind of event that you might want to do out here. Wow, oh, there's Elkmont circa 1912. Get the one flat tire rocking Oh, they even re they renovated the Spence cabin. We're gonna have to go down and check that out. Quite a social place, people. They took the fine clothes. They shared food down at the Appalachian Club three times a day, but at night, and especially on Saturday night, they would dress up and have dinner and dance. Had an orchestra. And I don't dance. Yeah. Can we see in there? Mm. Well, it just looks like one big open room. Okay. Well, uh, I'll be damned. Be back, y'all. Daisy Town's eclectic architecture. That's for sure. The buildings you see along the shaded street for a hodgepodge of designs. Yep. These rustic cabins were built by city dwellers inspired by the back to nature movement. Influenced by the craftsman style of architecture, which emphasized simplicity and the use of natural materials. You can see that. This is still it's got a little rock pathway up. Whew. 
It's definitely windy today too. Oh, check out the double doors going out to the patio here. <laughs> You even have an, look at this, for the bathroom. There's the John. What an awesome view you have <laughs> while you're, you know, doing business. Huh? <laughs> Telling the viewers. The awesome view you have of the neighborhood while you're on. Um... No, no, I want the neighbors to see you. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Uh, pizza's here. Oops, <laughs> <laughs> can't get off. I have to go back through this. What? What's the purpose of that? Yeah, that's definitely a mother in law house there. <laughs> Man, just stick her out there! This is going to be a different video. <laughs> okay, bye. Park Service certainly did an awesome job restoring these old cottages. Compared to how they looked in previous visits, these homes look great. As we've said in other adventures, we love history, and walking around Elkmont feels as if we're walking through history, stepping along the same walkways and roads of those who made these houses home during a simpler time. And with these mountainous surroundings, it's almost a slice of heaven. There. Okay, so went there, and guess what? Now we're going to the trail, yeah. which is up there. 20 minutes of prepping in the car because we couldn't decide what we wanted to bring. I still don't know what to bring. I brought the pack so I can have our you know, first aid kits and stuff like that. In case we get hurt. Right. Safety first. Yeah. Or third. Safety third? Okay. So we're doing uh, Jake's place. Jake's, Jake's trail. Yeah. And it's 3.7 miles. It's not, not a long one. Because, you know. Someone's still deprived of sleep. Don't know sleep. who that. Huh? Sleep? What the hell is that? <laughs> so, this is a. Is this a road? Yeah. Well, it was, it was a road that they used back when this used to be a town. So the trail's on a road. That's what you're saying. <laughs> no. Okay. Hey, look. Looks like there used to be a house here. Yeah. Wait, so what you're saying is there were more houses? Yep. Look, there's even a fence. Whoa. Who just built a, a fireplace in the middle of the woods? That's dumb. <laughs> Of course you know, I'm not that stupid, I know. I'm just being funny, haha, -ha. joking. So why did they put a fireplace in the middle of the woods? <laughs> look at that, look, look at that, look at that waterfall. This part of Elkmont shows the remains of homes and cottages the Park Service chose not to preserve. Unfortunately, most are in very poor condition due to vandalism and the elements, and it's not feasible to save them. However, the foundations and fireplaces remain, and we can still imagine what it was like to live here, especially beside these beautiful waters and the songs of nature lulling you to sleep. It's like, like a field of fireplaces. It's weird. 
weird. I wish I would have rebuilt all of them, but you know. I guess funds and stuff and you know, probably were worse off than the other ones. Still cool though. Why would they put the fireplace right on the edge? I guess that used to be a fireplace? wall goes all the way up to the river. Do you notice how cold it is? <laughs> yes, I did. <sighs> Look, stairs are still there. They're part of the wall. So yeah. You guys definitely gotta check this place out. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna get off this because uh, I kind of want to do picture stuff. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys. Later. I kind of elaborate. This house was. If you're like in the basement area here. Look, some of the walls. Chimney's kind of leaning a little. <laughs> and there's a central theme on all these homes here. Look at this guy in their backyard. Be back, y'all. Yo, check this one out. It's like a basement. Dang. It was like an underground house, like a Frodo Baggins house. A gay Raj? For their horse and buggies. I mean, one of these two huge pipes on each side. Yeah. Huh. Huh. If you guys, if any of you guys are watching this and know what the history of this, let us know. Very interesting. Hey, look. Piece of steel. Huh. It's, it's the two huge pipes. It's made, I don't think this is a house. Huh. Maybe it had something to do. Maybe it was like a mill or something. Because I mean, oh. they did logging and stuff back here. Oh, yeah. Huh. And they piped water through. Cause that's definitely not regular plumbing for a house. Those are huge clay pipes. I don't know. That's, I don't, don't think it was a house. I'm sure there was a building on top of all this. 
Huh. Yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> This place is huge. <laughs> maybe, maybe they store lumber in it, like you said, like a lumber mill and put yeah. lumber under it. I think it has something to do with the lumber industry that used to be. I mean, the, this whole Elkmont Village here was started by the Little River Lumber Company, I think. Some lumber company. I think it's the Little River one. But one of the lumber companies deeded out the land that created this area that we're in now where people live, the resort area. So I'm just guessing this might have had something to do with the lumber industry, whatever was here. It doesn't seem like it was a house, especially with this. It's the pipes that give it away for me. Yeah. That's cool, though. <laughs> How many times have you hiked this? Yeah, I, I've never... There's well, a shovel! Because most of the structures... Oh. Yeah, Check that out! It's all in Spain. That's sick! Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, you pay attention to the, to the right-hand side of the road. You don't really look to the left. Because there's hardly anything on the left. So, I mean, it is kind of tucked back away. And in the summertime, when all the oh, trees yeah. are full, there's no way you're going to see this back here. I think the only reason we saw it is because there's no leaves on the tree right now. <laughs> I noticed, I noticed the... <laughs> I, I noticed I, I want to know what this is. It... Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of research when I get home. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we're gonna keep going on. We just thought we'd share that with yeah, you because. Whoa! Hold on. Is there more? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Gonna... Look at, look at the outside. Okay, hold on. I want to get a picture of this thing. Oh god. Oh, it's not. There's more of them. Oh. Going down the side of. This has to be some type of building. You know, not like a house. Oh okay. yeah. Okay, we're gonna take a tour. Huh. And the same on the other side, too. Yeah. Huh. And just about the sheer size of it. Look how huge this is and how it looks from up here. This is huge. Whatever this was. That's crazy. Okay, so <laughs> like I said, <laughs> I'm gonna get some shots of this. There you are. Get those shots of this. We're gonna go back to the trail and uh, keep on. This trail may be longer than we thought it was because you know <laughs> we keep finding stuff. <laughs> so I'll talk to you guys later. So out of all the cabins, that, the remnants of cabins that we saw heading up this road. They're preserving that one. The only one. And the reason is because that was the house of Colonel David something. Okay, I'm quickly losing my affinity for GoPros. Anyways, house. Colonel David Chapman was his. He was one of the pioneers of creating the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Successful Knoxville businessman, member <clears throat> member of the Appalachian Club. Uh, he was the first appointed commissioner of the State of Tennessee Great Smoky Mountains National Park Commission. 
who helped purchase land for the proposed park. Also says on that sign, <laughs> he was not very popular with the people who lived around here. Because <laughs> they're taking their land. But his house, they're, they're maintaining. Everyone else has got cream. <laughs> great guy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't vote for him. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Continuing down what's left of the road. Notice the power lines are still going down here. I know. Okay, be back. Okay, guys, check this out. Never seen this before in my life. <laughs> you even think this. No, this was back here. There's old pipes over there. I'm not even sure we're supposed to be back here, but hey, the gate was open. There's no, no trespassing signs. So, yeah, we're not vandalizing people, so, you know. This is pretty cool, though. Whoa, what is this? Like, I, I think I know what it is, but like, I don't know what it is. This is so crazy. I, see, this is what I like. I, I love finding old things and exploring them like this. I'll get in there in a minute. This is crazy. Look at this. Did you know this was back here? No. Nope. <laughs> See, this is this is what you get with us. We we find things we've never seen before. Like hidden treasures, you know what I mean? Hidden treasures. Like who, who knows what else is out there, you know? Because, I mean, this was just hiding behind in the woods. So, so crazy. Things sticking out of the ground. So, is that water? Water tower or something? Maybe they went from this in the olden days and then went to this. Fish Hell didn't have PVC pipe back then. So, yeah, we're gonna do our picture stuff, but uh, talk to you guys later. Not only were we stumbling upon remnants of the old town, but we were also finding more little pockets of the streams winding its way all around the old town. We weren't sure what we found out here, but its proximity to this beautiful little creek suggests this was a water supply. So, we found another old home foundation that I hadn't seen before. There's the main home there. This looks like it was a probably a porch or something right here.
totally cool. We actually haven't made a whole lot of progress on the trail itself. Because <laughs> we keep finding things to go look at. So where do you think this pathway goes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big old old growth. There are some, a lot of old growth around here. Of course, <clears throat> you could tell this was all open here, like I was telling him. Because these are all very young trees right here. So you know, back in the day, this was all open. Yeah, and there's their meter box. <laughs> it's funny how they have the meter boxes out on a pole and out on the houses like nowadays. <laughs> okay, be back y'all. Finally, we moved away from the old town and at last focused on the actual trail. Now the trail switched from an old road to a former railroad bed, so the hiking was pretty easy as we made our way up the mountain toward the Avent cabin. These old railways that once hauled away the trees from the majestic Smokies now provide a pathway back to show how beautifully nature has recovered and reclaimed these woods. Hello viewers, this just in, it's cold. Yes. <laughs> it's supposed to get warmer. Yeah, it's not. It's in the 50s here. <laughs> it's not. No. <laughs> so, yeah. This is a, a video, finally, without all the humans with kids everywhere. Yeah. Lots of humans. <sighs> Of course, that most of the park closed. So I figured, well, I was afraid, you know, places like this would be more populated than normal because people have nowhere else to go. And uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> so finally, we get to do a video thing and talk to you guys and say without interference. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so this trail had a a lot of mysteries we didn't know so that was kind of cool I, I was hope, kind of hoping there was more along the way but then you got well, this so. there might have been more because remember we we, yeah. we branched off that the trail that was following the water yep mm -hmm. came off of that and there might have been more structures up that road and then we kind of saw some down are you are you even looking at me <laughs> jesus there are some down there you kind of see the top of the bluish down there and there's some type some type of structures down there but who knows it's part of the mystery it's probably not a mystery since seeing how the other trail goes right to it so but we don't know about it so it's a mystery to us so ha yeah we win so far this whole hike is going to be a mystery to us I didn't download it and come around. Yep. And we I'm have trying to pull it from three year old memory <laughs> to find it. <laughs> so, how's that going? I don't know. <laughs> Is it working? We haven't found it yet, so. Huh. <laughs>
Okay, so that's all we got at the moment. So talk to you guys later. Okay, as promised, we found the bridge on our little secret side thing. Yeah, so, uh, and, and look what we came across. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Cabin's up there somewhere. Yeah, you, you know what? You know, you'll you'll see it when we get up there. Okay, just just be a little patient. We're trying to take this in and uh, do some photos and stuff, and then go up there. So, till then, talk to you guys later. Moments from our destination, we couldn't help but stop and take a moment to admire this stunning spot. What a beautiful stream and its soothing roar tempted us to never want to leave. Miss Avon chose this area as inspiration for her artistry. I can certainly see why. Okay, so we made it. Hopefully we have it to ourselves. Ours. Avent Cabin. Cool. Ah. So cold out. Just thought everyone should know. Hasn't changed one bit. Oh, we're going now. Ah. Okay, so I'll go inside, see what's up. You cheated. I like how they left the door open. <laughs> they ask you to roll the rocket from the door when you leave. Mm. You know nobody gives a crap. Sadly. Check out the old stage shovel. <laughs> ah. This is Coat rack. It's a big pan. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Do not go upstairs. Yeah. Do not remove. Now, if you're a camper and stuff, you can actually stay here. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's like an AT shelter. Yeah. You know, it's like first come, first serve stuff. You can stay here and then you gotta kind of clean up, you know, and leave no trace. Yep, and close the dang door. Yeah. Is that the loo? No. Oh. Oh. This is where. Whoa. The guest books. And this is a history of the the lady that built this. Hmm. Huh. She used to come up here for like 
inspiration and stuff. She's a writer, a poet, I believe. As far as she a painter. Oh, well, she was a painter. That's right. Oh, hold on. I'm screwing up the camera over here. Mena Trainer Avon was born September 17, 1868, in Nashville, Tennessee. She was a noted painter who studied painting at Cincinnati Art Academy. She taught painting in Nashville. Her oil and watercolor paintings have been exhibited in Massachusetts, South Carolina, and Tennessee. A member of the Nashville Studio Club, the Nashville Artist Guild, and the Centennial Club, Mrs. Avon often painted in this cabin she converted to an art studio. Mina was married to Frank Avon and had one son, James Avon. Mrs. Avon spent her final three years with her son in Sewanee, Tennessee, where she died on January 2, 1959, at the age of 90. Her artistic career spanned 68 years. Incredibly peaceful out here. Just imagine what it was like to live out here. Sitting up in her little oasis from the world to do her artwork. Look at that. Probably where she hung her laundry. Like I said, <laughs> you can hear that river roaring down there. What a neat little place. actually had running water because that's a water line right there well yeah there's a sink right there duh in her little kitchen area and Ian was out there trying to find her daughter's cabin or any kind of evidence of it remnants and he's not finding anything out there Got the tree. I don't know if you could see the river flowing right there down in the valley. Yeah. This is raw Appalachian right here. really put in the words how, I, how it just makes me feel <laughs> and you can see the buds on the trees the trees are just starting to come to life everything's just gonna be exploding with life here pretty soon What it'd be like to just get away from everything and live out here. Uh, those pesky responsibilities, huh? Yeah, okay, be back. Well, that was fun. Thought there'd be, according to the 
stuff in there. There's another, was another cabin. I tried finding it, there's nothing out there. I went, I went everywhere. <laughs> nothing, but this place is awesome. You ever camping or whatever, AT stuff, like definitely, or if you're just passing through and you know where the secret, you know, spot is, <laughs> check this place out. It's pretty historical yeah. and amazing, and there's lots of information yeah. in there about the, this place. So. Yeah, the, the lady in her life and her kids. And it's got a whole history in there. It's got the whole, another folder, whole history of what went into saving this place and putting it on the uh, register of historic places. The, the whole history is in there, along with letters that uh, it seemed like the art community came together because several of the people have wrote letters and they got copies of these people's letters in this book that's in there and they were writing the whatever commission there that does the historic deciding on which places to save and you know several were artists and they were explaining how important this place was and how this uh, Maya, is that her name? Whatever. That's in the hey, thing. I'm bad at remembering names. But it just, I mean, I guess she, she must have made a real impact on the art community back then. Yeah, cool. Really cool place. Yeah. You cool lady. And then, then comes the sad part. Yeah, we gotta go back. Yep. <laughs> oh well. Good hike though. Good hike. Definitely hike this. Preferably when the other roads are open and you're by yourself out here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> We're gonna get out of here. Huh? You, you can see though where the water and the bridge is right there. Yeah. Through the trees. Gorgeous. Yeah, can you imagine the view? Like, yeah, can like you just sit with your coffee on a rocking chair on the porch? Just yeah, and seeing all that and listening to that. Like a good night. <sighs> Get tired just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna get out of here before we never oh, return. Please. <laughs> so, I do have a hammock. And there's beds in there. To just, you know, the springs. But I got a hammock. Whatever, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, it was time to head back, but our adventure wasn't over just yet. I'd noticed a sign for the Spence cabin back while we were still in Elkmont. It's supposed to be another restored cabin, and the largest yeah of those saved by the Park Service. We wanted to go check it out. So, we made our way back down the mountain, having enjoyed the serenity of the Avon cabin, back to Elkmont to see what else the old ghost town had to offer. Well, hello. So, draws the end of our trail. Because, you know, we're coming up to this stuff again, so that means we're towards the end of our adventure today. Sad, I was really hoping to find other stuff in the woods. What's that? <laughs> There's nothing more than seeing something from a distance and then going for it and then find out it's nothing. <laughs> I did that at the cabin. I saw a little pipe in the ground. I was like, oh, what's that? I'm like halfway up a mountain, I'm like, Huh. It's nothing. <laughs> it's like, coming back. Well, that was very rude. If I was boring you, all you had to do is tell me. God, I have to kill the camera. Jesus. Anyways, we're towards the end. Blah, blah, blah. All that, the structures. Yeah, we're getting close to the road. Yeah. Hope, no, but seriously. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. I love all this old stuff, things. And the, 
and the wind in my hair and the cold on my ears. You know, I'm not used to this yet, okay? I'm used to having like stuff protecting stuff, but it's cold with no hair, okay? Stressing me out. I'm oh, okay. We're in the woods. Yeah, yeah, woods with no leaves. Oh, dude. Oh, and he broke the GoPro. <laughs> but no, this this is really, really a lot of fun. You guys need to check this place out. Be respectful of everything, all the structures and stuff. Please be respectful. But really, really check this out. Pay attention to the trails because it's not does not have a sign to get to that cabin we were at. You have to really look for it. So. And if you see one that's going down to the river, don't go on that one. It's the next one. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. But uh, here we are. And we're going to do our little, you know, thing by the car over there. Make us look really cool. There's still one more cabin. There is? Yeah. Spencer cabin. It's on the bottom of the hill on the way up. You didn't tell me that. I'm telling the people like buy and stuff. And then you bring that up. Yes. It's cold. Did you really kill the battery? I don't know. I didn't shoot it or nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, apparently there's another cabin. I thought that was it. Honestly, I thought that was the cabin. But apparently there's another one. So we're. I'll see you when we get there. Okay. Promise. Almost promise. Yeah. So, talk to you guys when we get wherever that is okay so we're at Spence Spence's cabin and uh, it says it's being reserved and stuff but can you like stay here or something okay, I guess so but we just want to do like video stuff yeah. so we're not like gonna go in Spence Cabin. It's pink. This is a uh, constructed in the area of Elkmont called Millionaire's Row. Developed toward the end of the lumbering boom on prime real estate along the river. Spence Cabin. One of the largest and most impressive. Constructed in 1928 for Alice Townsend, third wife of Colonel W.B. Townsend. The house was originally called River Lodge. Huh. I wonder if, that's the, I wonder if the town of Townsend was named after this dude. Huh. I don't know that, but I wonder. That'd be cool. Looks like it needs some uh, roof assistance. You can stay here. Yeah, you can reserve this place. It's been electrified. Yeah. Oh wow, like a little patio thing or uh, something tells me the electric isn't yeah. fully hooked up yet. Look, there's a structure over there. Oh. This is nice. I don't think it's been in, you know, working order, but, huh, this is cool. Got spots down here. This would be a cool place. I wonder what 
what this was used for. Wow. That is a nice view though. I do my picture stuff, sorry. Okay, so back to the house. <laughs> Where'd he go? Did he ditch me? I think he ditched me. Okay, so. The hails. I'm gonna do my picture stuff. And I'll talk to you guys when I'm done with it. Again, with breathtaking scenic beauty to build your home beside. I can't blame these people one bit. Given the chance, I'd build a home in such an idyllic location myself. True, the logging industry was hot and heavy during the time Elkmont was thriving, and therefore, this area was a bit more open than it is now. I can still imagine, with rose-colored glasses, that those days were just as paradisal as they look now, even in the twilight of winter. The Appalachians are home. Okay, now we're just like, you know, walking around, looking at the other part of this. Look at the walls. Just think, I think there used to be a house on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is like a wall around the house. Oh. And there's the fireplace for the house itself. There it is. Yep, this is that trail. Okay, we've been on this before, I think twice. I, I remember this. I think this is the coolest bridge. It's like it's like my mom's size bridge. Seriously, that bridge is cool. Do not go behind these cones. Uh, but why? Uh, that sucks. Troll bridge. I guess the troll is on lunch or something right now because he's not here. Yeah. Those trolls need to eat too. <laughs> Children. <laughs> uh, funny. Well, I don't know why you're not allowed over here. What's what's wrong with it? There's old steel pipe. Huh. Maybe there's a plant habitat over there. So, if you can already guess it, there's a home structure over there, and this connected to that, so. Pretty cool. Okay, so we're at the place <laughs> connected to the the bridge, Trolls Bridge. The troll Bridge leads here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, pretty cool place. These people had two fireplaces because one wasn't good enough. <laughs> oh. So yeah, oop, didn't trip, you didn't see it. 
Look how tall this fireplace was. You gotta like reach up in there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The floor, you know, was there. They still have their water meter here. Huh. <laughs> can, think you can still turn it on? <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> Look, he's looking for their landscaping. Cool. A little stream. It's pretty cool. All right. That's it. Okay, so that was, I already forgot what we were. Uh, look, basically exploring the Elkmont area, taking the uh, Jake's Creek. Yeah, that. Trail up to the Avon, or Avent, I don't know how she pronounced her name. Cabin yeah. thing. And that then place. touring around and finding a bunch of other cool stuff. So, yeah. hope you guys enjoyed that. We had a lot of fun. And it's cold yeah, still. Yeah, it's, it's still. I think it got colder. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, <laughs> definitely check out this trail. Pay attention to the trail because you'll never find it. Especially if it's in the summer-ish. Yeah, when the, yeah. when the trees are falling. Oh, man, that would be even harder to find. Yeah, but uh, what are we giving this trail? We never talked about um, it. Eight? I'm going to go with an eight because it's yeah. the Smokies. Yeah, so yeah. that already bumps it up to like yeah. six already. Yeah, it starts <laughs> off with their base, base score of six and then all the exploring and the cool structures and finding that stuff that I didn't know was out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and spending the time in that peace and on that ca in the cabin. Yeah. No people. No nope. peace. Yeah. But yeah. Hope you like that. <laughs> There's a lot more coming whenever yeah. we're consistent. Yeah. And keeping on it. But hopefully. hey, this is two weeks in a row. Yeah. Without <laughs> mess ups. Yeah. Except, you know, forgetting but, what to say now. Thanks again for all you people that have pushed us over 500. Yep. A big, big Extremely thanks. Extremely thankful. Now we need 1,000. Yep. That's our, that's our next So tell goal. your friends. Tell people you don't even know about yeah. us. Yeah, tell your friends. Out, tell, tell the husbands and wives and stuff yeah, and cousins. all that stuff. Tell them to subscribe. And find a random stranger just sitting yeah, needing just around or whatever. Street. So listen, man, you need to subscribe. No, I'm These saying. guys are cool. Yeah. I probably Don't ruined do any all of that. that. But uh, we'll see you guys next time. And hit that like and subscribe if you're new to this channel. And we'll see you guys next time. So until uh, then, stay safe and stay hiking. Keep your stick on the ice. Adios. Well, it's been another slightly long episode, but when it comes to this Great Smoky Mountains National Park, there is just so much to experience, and we love sharing those experiences with y'all. The Smokies are much more than the stunning mountains, vistas, and waterfalls. No, there is a history that we can't allow to fade from memory, as nature reclaims much of our encroachment into these hills. There will always be stories to tell, as long as there are those to listen. So from our family to yours, we wish you health and happiness, and we'll see you all out on the trail.